Okay, uh, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rabbi syuhli sadri wa yassari li amri wa ahlil uqdata min lisani yafqahu al-qawli. Okay, how are you guys? Hope you are doing good and uh, you are in a good of health. So as for today, we will move to the next chapter which is uh, Islamic Fund Management. Uh, previously, we have learned on uh, Islamic equities and also Shariah screening on how to determine the Shariah compliant status of the company and the Shariah screening process. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, for today, we will move to the next chapter, which is Islamic Fund Management. Specifically, we will focus on the unit trust. Okay, uh, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi syuhli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahul qawli. Okay. So for today, at the end of the session, okay, student uh, will be able to explain what is investment fund, okay, what is unit trust, uh, who is the party involved in the Islamic fund management, and you can classify uh, which is uh, investment fund and also you can explain well what is the type of fund by investment portfolio. So guys, what is fund management? So when we talk is fund management, it's been managed. Okay, investment activities where a group of investors invest their share or money in a fund that has a diversified portfolio in order to achieve set of financial goal. So specifically, fund management Fund management is a pooling of fund collected from a group of investor, a small number of group or unlimited number of investor. Okay, with the use of a legal entity, namely a fund and a person or entity that carry out this investment on their behalf is known as fund manager or fund management company. So guys, uh, assume that you are in the one group of class. For example, you are in the group of 5A. For example, so you are the group of investor. You 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 come from a different uh different background. Okay, one uh uh one of you might have a very fixed income. One of you have a, a very good career. One of you is a businessman. So you pull a fund together with with a different risk level. Okay, uh you invest for me. Me, uh, assume me as a fund management, fund manager. So you will give a fund to me to for me to manage the fund. Okay, so that is mean uh, fund management. So you have you have one group of people who pull the fund together, and then you give the fund. Okay, so so the fund will be managed by the fund manager. Okay, and then uh, it also known, okay, investment fund, it also known as a unit investment trust, okay, collective investment vehicle, mutual fund, collective investment scheme, managed fund. But as for Malaysia, okay, in Malaysia, it's known as a unit trust fund and also collective investment scheme, which uh, this is a, share, a very a similar meaning, but it's, uh, it's different uh, is different from one country to another country. For example, the term is different. Okay. For example, in Europe, they use a different term. In Malaysia, uh, we use a term of Islam, uh, unit trust fund and collective investment scheme. Okay. And then we have, what is the difference between Islamic and also conventional fund? Of course, uh, when we talk on Islamic and conventional fund, the 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 product itself is 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 similar. Okay, the operation between Islamic and also conventional is similar to each other. However, we have uh, in Islamic uh, fund or in Islamic fund management, we have this item that make it different between Islamic and also conventional. So this must be ensured by. All the Sharia advisor, all the operation operator, all the fund manager to ensure the Islamic is 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 Sharia comply. Okay, what is the the first uh, differences is the investable universe where this is the basic principle in Islamic investment or Islamic fund management or in in, in all Islamic Sharia compliant where uh, the key difference between. Islamic and conventional Islamic will invest only in the Sharia compliant investment. Okay, 
and then we have to uphold to the principle which is uh, principle principle of islamic investment they will use only a contract con sharia sharia contract the underlying sharia sharia contract such as uh, mudarabah and also musharakah specifically for islamic fund management and then in term of purification okay purification uh, here referring to the in the in 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 time of fund manager who invest in sharia compliance stock okay we have previously we have learned on the sharia screening process so once the stock is considered non sharia compliant on the announcement date okay and let's say that the fund manager is not aware of that so they have to do purification in order to to do cleansing on the dividend profit okay uh, that they receive in order to ensure the 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 profit received by the shareholder received by the uh, fund holder is sharia compliant profit and then we have uh, the 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 main ingredient or the main contributor for the sharia compliant we have the sharia advisor role to ensure all the activities of fund manager and all uh, related to the fund islamic fund is considered sharia compliant this one we will discuss later and also we have the fee structure for conventional fund okay uh, we have the we we calculate the profit or we calculate the value of the fund will be based on the net asset value however in islamic fund okay uh, the contribution of fund okay contribution of of uh, contribution of the value of the fund will be based on the contract underlying sharia contract that uh, the fund manager use for example uh, mudarabah and also musharakah however uh, if a conventional it will be based on the net asset value on the day itself okay who is the party involved in islamic fund management so here we ha we have a few name Amanara Trust, CT Bank, Public Mutual, Zico Sharia. So this is the they are parties who involve or the participant who are, who are a market player of Islamic fund management. Okay, the first one we have a Sharia unit. Sharia unit is uh, situated in the fund manager. Fund manager who responsible to do uh to do the analysis of the fund, to do uh, the allocation of fund. To, to, to identify which portfolio is suitable for the customer, for the client. Okay, and then we have the fund administrator also. Uh, location is uh, location also is in the fund manager itself. And then we have the compliance officer. Okay, compliance officer is not necessary, uh, it's not only in a Sharia compliant only, but it's also we have to comply with the reg regulation and the guideline from the securities commission. So anything uh, which is not, which is contradict to the regulation, which is uh, uh, not similar or uh, contradict to the rules itself, okay, it must be reported to the compliance officer. So compliance officer must be report, okay, must report the 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 situation happen to the upper level, which is uh, sorry, comply uh, to the securities commission. Okay, and then we have the distributor and also the promoter. Okay, it can be the fund manager as well to promote the fund. And then we have custodian. For example, we have a city bank where, where the fund itself is not being held by the fund manager. So you have to understand, okay, we have the relationship between fund manager, custodian, and also the trustee. So fund manager won't hold the fund or the cash itself so for example you invest in fund manager so you invest uh, you invest uh, to the fund manager so fund manager will will execute uh, investment for example they will fund manager will invest in a, a stock market so when they want to buy a share so when they want to uh, sell their share in stock market for example okay so the the uh, we call it apa? duit keluar masuk tu okay will be managed by this custodian okay 
the cash flow will be managed by the custodian because the cash itself is not being managed by the fund manager. Okay, the custodian is responsible okay, to hold the cash from the fund manager. Okay, it also be it, it also being helped by the trustee itself. For example, fund manager want to invest, uh, want to invest um in a gold market, for example. So we have one fund name, public um, I don't know, uh, public uh, gold investment, for example, public gold investment, that is the name of a uh, unit trust fund. So fund manager will, will, will execute the process, will give instruction to the trustee. Trustee will give instruction to the custodian to do a buying process, to do other, other than that, they will do a selling process. Okay, the process, the transaction process will undergo these two, uh, these two institution, which is custodian and also the trustee. Okay, and then we have the trustee. Okay, uh, so for custodian is uh, they 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 responsible for the safekeeping of the cash safekeeping safekeeping of the fund manager. However, we have the trustee. Trustee were responsible to ensure all the uh, transaction or all the all the uh, process itself is compliant to the trustee. So we have the trustee between fund manager, trustee, and also the investor. So trustee will act on behalf of the investor to ensure that the investor will 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 receive their right. For example, at at, at the end of this month, for example, uh, investor is entitled to receive their dividend. Okay, entitled to receive their bonus. So trustee must ensure that fund manager instruct them for uh, to give uh, the to give the to give the bonus to give the dividend to the investor. So trustee then will 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 issue a instruction to the custodian to release the profit to re to release the cash itself. Okay, and then we have accounting unit, of course, uh, to uh, to 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 facilitate all the financial of the company, and also we have the legal unit that work together with trustee, okay, in order to ensure that all the participant, all the player parties, is uh, doing their uh, responsibility toward the trustee, okay, according to the trustee. Okay. Okay, you guys okay? Okay, and then we have uh, this regul regulatory requirement in Malaysia for establishment of Islamic fund. Okay, so when we talk on Islamic fund, we have this guideline that must be comply all the fund manager in order to ensure that the fund, the fund itself is considered as uh, uh, regulated by the authority. For example, we have a point, a sharia advisor, we have to uh, the the fund manager must ensure that the employee have the full capacity and also uh, competency in order to do their job, and then uh, fund manager must ensure the portfolio management is uh, considered and compliant, written disclosure declaration. They must conduct internal audit and Islamic fund management business via Islamic window. So we'll go one by one after this. So in, in, in order to appoint a Sharia advisor, okay, they, this is all the criteria that must be followed by the fund manager. Okay, so when we talk on the fund, Islamic fund manager must appoint individual or corporation as independent Sharia advisor and meet the following criteria. So when we talk on Sharia advisor, it, 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 it can be individual and it also can be a corporation. For example, uh, previously I have mentioned a Zico Sharia. So that one is come in the corporation. Okay, so this is all the criteria. The person cannot be bankrupt, bankrupt. Okay, not convicting any offense arising from the criminal proceeding. Okay, must have a good reputation character. Okay, necessarily qualification. Expertise, particularly in Fit Muamala, Islamic jurisprudence, and has experience and or exposure in Islamic finance. So they have a degree, yeah, in Sharia or degree in Islamic, uh, in Fit Muamala, degree in uh, Fit, okay, and Islamic bank or 
its licensed institution approved by Central Bank of Malaysia to carry on Islamic banking business. It can be also a, an Islamic bank. Okay, in independent Sharia advisor uh, must engage at least one Sharia expert who meet the criteria stipulated in paragraph 4.01. Okay, in addition, the Sharia expert and the corporation concern should not have breached any securities or banking laws since the date of incorporation. Corporation must not have winding up order or resolution pass again it. So, an Islamic fund manager may also appoint non-resident Sharia advisor who may be in an individual or corporation or an Islamic bank. The fund manager should disclose and submit to the SC information on the Sharia advisor. Okay, so Islamic Fund Manager also responsible to notify SC, Securities Commission, for any resignation or cessation of service by Sharia Advisor within two weeks of resigning, ceasing of service. So let's say they, they, they are not working, uh, they, are not, they have been removed from the list, so they have to notify SC for new appointment or for the, the end, for end of contract of the person that been appointed of the Sharia. Committee. A new Sharia advisor must be appointed within one month from the resignation or cessation of service, where Sharia advisor is subject to any disqualification or become otherwise unfit to provide his or its service. The Islamic Fund Manager must ensure that Sharia advisor vacate the position immediately. Islamic Fund Manager must inform SC of the disqualification and vacation of the post. So, if the Sharia advisor is not able to give a, 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 a their is not unable to give uh, their uh, duty, okay, due to the some reason because unfit to the job, okay, they have to provide a, a new one and they have to mention to the SC why the person is not disqualified from being a Sharia advisor. And then uh, fund manager, okay, uh, in, in, in Sharia advisor, they have to uh, at all time adequate, have adequate employee with necessary qualification, expertise, experience for its business, okay, provide uh, adequate and sufficient training, okay, the staff must be trained well, okay, whether internal or otherwise for all its employee and licensed representative. So that require the necessary knowledge for its business, ensure its compliant officer is well versed on Islamic management, has adequate Sharia knowledge on Islamic finance and capital market. And then in terms of portfolio management, okay, Islamic fund manager must ensure that investment activities are limited to Sharia compliant activities, okay, Sharia compliant investment only. Okay, investment in listed security bursa Malaysia, Islamic fund manager should invest only in security listed on the SSC list of Sharia compliance securities. So this, uh, all of, only that, uh, this is Sharia compliant uh, list will be announced by the end of November. And one more in June, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, this is, this is uh, all that uh, Sharia stock that can be invest by the fund manager. So they must aware uh, in the announcement date, either the their stock that they hold is still uh, Sharia compliant or non Sharia compliant. So when they notice late uh, after the announcement date, they have to do a purification, which I have mentioned earlier. Okay, to to do a cleansing. Uh, for investment uh, in unlisted securities. Okay, so. When we talk in listed or unlisted, listed in Bursa Malaysia, unlisted is, is not listed in Bursa Malaysia. For example, in uh, commodity, uh, in, apa, uh, in gold, commodity, okay, which is not listed in Bursa Malaysia, Islamic fund manager is encouraged to follow the SAC methodology in determining the Sharia status of listed security for investment in security traded on a recognized stock exchange, an Islamic fund should only invest in security endorsed by Sharia advisor of the recognized stock exchange or by international Sharia standard setting body. So we also have that fund that invest in outside our country. For example, uh, invest in Japan, invest in uh, New York stock exchange. So there are uh, must 
obey or must comply, must uh, refer to the benchmark by the sh uh, international Sharia standard setting. For example, we have AOF. Okay, uh, so uh, it's not that Malaysia only that we Malaysia only that have the Sharia screening, but also we have a, a, a worldwide screening. For example, AOF itself. Okay, and then uh, in in this category, portfolio management, they have to maintain of account and also identify the risk management. Okay, especially in Sharia compliant risk. Okay, to avoid Sharia non compliant risk. Okay, the fund manager also have to comply to the written disclosure and declaration. Okay, they are expected to prepare at least annually a written disclosure declaration to the board of director of the Islamic fund manager. And they see that Islamic fund management business is carried out in accordance with Sharia principle. Okay, Islamic fund manager must ensure that the disclosure, declaration, and the record made by the Sharia advisor are maintained as required under the guideline of compliance function for fund manager. The record must be available for examination upon the SE request. Okay. Okay, uh, they also must conduct internal audit. Okay, must put in place appropriate system mechanism within its internal audit requirement to monitor Sharia compliance according to this guideline and also relevant SA regulation or standard, including resolution issued by the SAC. Okay, we have settled for uh, Sharia compliant, Sharia advisor for regulatory requirement for Islamic fund. So we move to the next uh, topic, which is classification of fund. So when we talk on fund, okay, fund uh, investment fund, we can divide it into two. Okay, either it is a closed-ended fund or open-ended fund. Before going further and deeper, uh, for asset, uh, asset fund, for example, we have sukuk fund, okay, balance fund. We have to understand this is the two concept of fund, uh, fund that you have to understand. Okay, so this is the the elaboration. What is open-ended and also what is closed-ended. However, I will summarize this in this table, which is much more uh, clear for you to understand. Uh, otherwise, you can also read to the uh, elaboration. So what is the feature between open-ended and closed-ended? Okay, feature, the first is uh, open-ended is a collective investment which can issue and redeem unit at any time. However, for closed-ended, okay, is a company, investment company structure where the company will issue share for subscription. So that, that will be the main difference between uh, two. Open-ended is considered, for example, unit trust. Close-ended close -ended is, example, is share and stock. Okay, for open-ended, okay, investor can purchase unit in such fund directly from the unit trust company or through authorized agent. For example, individual or bank. However, in close ended, okay, it's another type of collective investment but limited numbers of unit. So we have one key point here in close ended, which is a limited numbers of unit. Okay, when we talk on limited number of of unit, it's different from open ended, where uh, open ended will will not limit the unit. For example. Okay, when you come, uh, when you come uh, to uh, to the uh, unit trust agent, okay, when you come to the unit trust agent, you will give a uh, money to them to invest in any uh, asset portfolio, okay. So the agent will will receive the money, and uh, the agent will then go to buy, go uh, open deposit uh, your money to the fund manager, and fund manager will conduct the business. Okay, uh, is there any possibility for the agent, agent, unit trust agent to reject your money? For example, uh, he said to you that, oh, sorry, for this fund, we have full already. No, right? So it's not limited. So the, uh, for you to invest in, uh, for example, unit trust, we don't limit, okay? Uh, we don't limit, sky is the limit, again. So we don't limit the amount. Okay, we will still, for example, this class have, okay, this class have invest in me, fund manager. So I, as a fund manager, 
Okay, I won't say to you. Okay, if uh, come the next class. Okay, uh, okay, the fund manage uh, our, our fund for this fund, for example, public gold fund. Okay, have reached the limit. No, okay. So we'll find another alternative for you to invest. For example, kalau tak ada emas dekat Malaysia ni, kita ambil lah emas kat Uganda ke, okay, emas kat Zimbabwe ke. Okay, in order for you to still invest in public gold fund. Ah, uh, Okay, fund eh. Bukan public gold tu. Uh, okay, fund. However, in close-ended, okay, we have share and also IPO, for example. So IPO, uh, if you still remember, we are issuing IPO, Initial Public Offering, which is the first issuance of the share. So they, they have a numbers of that. For example, the company will issue a 500,000 of unit. Okay, 500,000 of unit. So when the investor in the Bursa Malaysia, they subscribe to the unit, the unit will be finished. So the, that, that is mean with the limited number of unit. So for you to to buy the for you to buy the unit, you have to enter to the Bursa Malaysia. Okay, in the secondary uh, trading platform, which is Bursa Malaysia itself, to buy the stock. Okay, and then we move to the character. Okay, refer to the fund operated by the fund manager that may offer to the public invest the proceed in in a group of asset in accordance with the fund objective. However, in close ended, refer to the fund with fixed number of unit outstanding. One which does not redeem unit as open-ended fund, it behave more like stock. Okay, uh, ataupun dia memang stock lah. Okay, trading, buying and selling through unit trust company for open-ended. However, close-ended buying and selling take place in secondary market, for example, a stock exchange. And also price uh, computed on the daily basis. Okay, fund total asset minus liabilities uh, divide by number of unit outstanding, then you'll have the price. However, in close-ended, share determined entirely by a market demand, often higher or lower than the NAV per share. Okay, we take about uh, one minute, one minute, uh, one minute rest. You can pause uh, this video, okay? Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next topic, which is type of fund by investment portfolio. Okay, wait, I just... okay, sorry for the technical issues. Okay, so what is investment portfolio? So when you give your money uh, to invest in a fund manager, they will allocate your money to invest in any of this portfolio. Okay, uh, this is, this is a, a, a few of the portfolio that we have uh, in fund management. Okay, and, and they, they're responsible to conduct the investment in this portfolio. They're responsible to, um, to, do, to, to do some allocation, which is uh, where we, uh, what is suitable for person A in order for him to invest. So let's say he is a moderate person. So where is the portfolio that sweet suitable for him to be invest? Okay, so all of this we can divide into a lower risk taker, medium risk taker, and also high risk taker. So this allocation of fund uh, is being used to allocate the risk take, uh, risk uh, as appetite by the investor itself. So let's say I give, uh, for example, uh, Cik Kia. So uh, Cik Kia will be a medium risk taker because she have a fixed income okay, that uh, will go to, his, uh, to her cash flow. He's a gov uh, she's a government servant. Okay, she is, uh, have a fixed income of 5,000 every every month. So which of this investment portfolio that suit for Cik Kia? However, it's different for Cik Ali. Cik Ali, who is a business owner, businessman. Okay, some 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 of time he will she he will uh uh, uh he will make a lot of money. Okay, uh, due to the COVID, he will uh apa, kerugian. Okay, he will he won't able to make a lot of money. So it's a uh, difference uh, between one another in terms of risk taker itself. So for fund manager, this is the place where 
uh, they plan and they conduct on where to invest. Okay, for example, the first one we have equity fund. So when we talk on equity fund, it investing in a stock market. Okay, we have a high level of risk are expected to provide high return in the long term. So three kind of equity, for example, index fund, aggressive growth fund, international equity fund. Okay, uh, for international invest in overseas share market aggressive is is for high speculative mutual fund that seek large profit from capital gain, invest in small and seasoned company which is high price and earning ratio, uh, high investment for aggressive investor, and we have index fund which uh, invest in company with higher capital growth potential but associated with higher risk. Okay, so this is uh, what we invest in equity fund. Okay, for example, public equity fund. So I'm I'm quite familiar with public public mutual. So uh, when giving example, I will give example based on public mutual. For example, they have a public equity fund. Okay, and then we have a income fund, a money market fund. So income fund mainly invest uh, mainly in government securities, uh, corporate bond, money market instrument. Okay, they have a high level of current income, invest in high grade share that pay a good dividend. Okay, established companies and generally view as a low risk for in income fund. So when we talk on low risk, okay, they invest in government because why? So government is a very uh, little uh, risk to be bankrupt ataupun Uh, kita tak katalah uh, kerajaan akan rugi sebab apa dia akan back with the all the uh, all the instrument from the government okay for example their bond all backed by the government sector itself okay and then we have money market uh, money market fund so uh, in money market we have lend we have a few product for example mudarabah interbank okay islamic commercial paper so uh fund manager will also invest in money market so money market as you learn okay it will give a very uh, uh for risk a uh, low risk taker okay invest in low risk money market instrument because uh, the money market itself the characteristic of money market is uh, uh investing in money market is a shorter period of time and then we have balance front balance fund Okay, balance fund of both current income and long term, uh, invest in blend of fixed income securities and common stock. When we say balance, it's balance between low risk and also high risk. So for the high, high risk, they will invest in common stock. The common stock is, is for the high risk taker. And also they also will invest in fixed income. So fixed income is safer to invest, less risky. And also we have Islamic fund uh, invest in share which comply with Sharia principle, uh, distinguish between halal and non-halal. Return receive will depend whether investment objectives is for growth, current income, or combination of growth and current. So basically, Islamic fund will invest in Islamic investment type of fund. Uh, and also we have a suku. Okay, investing in suku will be invest in diversified portfolio suku to secure. And distribute annual income to unit holder might include government, corporate, municipal, convertible suku. So we have a variety types of suku that will give you a, a different approach of uh, profit and also dividend. And then we have a rates unit. Okay, so when we look to the perspective prospectus of rates itself, we can see that. Uh, we have a fund manager that invests in REITs. Okay, special type of closed fund where it invests mainly in real property rather than the share of bond. Okay, provide the investor opportunity to participate in property market because, uh, because of the nature of investment, the return are highly speculative. Also uh, invest in ETF. Okay, link a uh, unit trust fund whose investment objective is to achieve the same return as particular market index. So all of this, uh, the individual investor also can be can invest in REIT, can invest in ETF. So in this perspective, there are fund manager who invest in this type category of investment portfolio. Okay, this is the summary of what we have discussed uh, just now. So what is unit trust? Okay, unit trust uh, is quite similar with the uh, fund management. It's a pool investment plan where the capital contribution of investor combined into legally formed trust fund. 
So it will be combined into the trust fund, for example, public equity fund. Okay, invested by the professional fund manager. So the, all the fund manager, they have a officer, they have an executive to do an analysis regarding where to invest on what portfolio and what is trending now with, that will give a very good contribution to the investor. Okay, acting on behalf of the investor in portfolio of marketable securities and a Shariah based unit trust give investor opportunity, opportunity to invest in diversified portfolio of Islamic securities managed by professional manager in accordance with Shariah. Okay, one important feature in unit trust is professional fund are employed to manage the fund. Okay, they have their own uh, exec that uh, staff that conduct the investment uh, process. Okay, highly qualified experience in investment. It is done at minimal cost, minimizing liquidity and capital appreciation. So this is the target of the investment. Investment Investor money will be pulled together to be invested in a single diversified investment portfolio, which comprise stock, bond and other accordance with the investment objective. Okay, unit trust investment offer a reasonable amount of return with minimal risk. Okay, when we talk on the regulatory approach of Islamic Unit Trust Fund, it must be uh, comply with this approach. Uh, just now we have mentioned on regulatory on the sharing advisor. This is for the uh, the whole of unit trust. Okay, adopt uh, uh, based on Securities Commission, adopt two tier regulation. The first regulation that apply to all unit trust, and the second tier is specifically for required for Islamic unit trust. So you can see this, uh, this document in uh, Securities Commission, so guideline for unit trust. So the whole document uh, is, is mentioning on what to do uh, on the regulation of unit trust. So all the fund manager must comply to the first tier, which is uh, all regarding the general uh, term, the general regulation for unit trust. However, for Islamic fund management, Okay, that conducting Islamic fund, they have to comply with the regulation for Islamic unit trust. Uh, that's why they, we have first tier and second tier. Okay, so this is the additional regulation required for Islamic unit trust. It's quite similar with what we have mentioned earlier, what we have discussed uh, in the earlier stage of uh, discussion just now. For example, appointment sharia committee, two Muslim investment committee member, uh, two uh, designated compliance of it officer for Islamic Unit Trust, enhance disclosure and offering document report by a Sharia committee. Okay, uh, so for Securities Commission, regulate established operation of unit trust under Capital Market and Service Act, Securities Commission Act and SC guideline and other relevant securities law. So it requires unit trust fund manager trustee to create a deed, register it with the Securities Commission. So uh, trustee must have the trustee that been mentioned, what, uh, which is what is the location fund to be handled or to be conducted. Okay, a copy of it may be inspected by unit trust fund manager office. Okay, the copy must be, uh, must have in trustee, in uh, unit trust fund manager. Okay, securities commission has placed several requirement in the appointment of the unit trust manager, trustee, unit trust manager director, chief executive, Officer, investment committee, committee member, and sharing advisor. Okay, the appointment of this party must be approved by the Securities Commission. Okay, so this is party involved, uh, it's a reputation from previous one. We have uh, already discussed it before. Okay, uh, this one also. Okay, Gipun, kita dah bincang tadi. So this one. Okay, so what is the underlying sharing contract that been used in unit trust? Okay, we have a few contract that, that uh, we conduct. So every product in Islamic uh, product, we have the underlying Sharia contract that being used. For unit trust, we use a Musharakah. Okay, because why? We have the investor and also we have the one who conduct the investment. Okay, exist between unit holder to deal with specific specified investment with the view that profit derived will be shared among according to the capital contribution or any other agreed profit sharing, sharing ratio. Okay, so they will use a Musharaka contract. Uh, the contract of sale and purchase execute between a unit holder and also being a manager, usually on a cash payment basis. So we sell, we buy. Okay, we sell, we, we sell our, our unit. Okay, we buy our unit. 
The price of the unit in the unit trust fund normally the manager forward selling or buying price on the next valuation point upon receipt of the request of purchase or redemption. And the valuation point is at the close of business for the day. And then we have a wakala. Okay, take place when your unit holder appoint the manager to exec, ex, excuse, excuse, okay, execute uh, the purchase or redemption on their behalf. Okay, uh, execute, okay, execute if I'm not uh, mistaken, which means the unit holder appoint manager to do a purchase and redemption on their behalf. Okay, let's say they want to buy a 10, uh, 100 unit of unit trust. And then uh, the next day, they want to sell the other unit or the, the 100 unit uh, from a uh, different fund. Okay, so they, uh, they, they appoint, they will appoint a manager to do the transaction. Okay, so by this wakala, manager is the wakil of the uh, transaction. Uh, and then we have a wadi ahliyat damana. Okay, uh, prior to the creation of the unit, the owner of the unit or the unit holder, the custodian is the manager. So we have uh, the unit itself, the unit will be custody by the manager. The contract take place when the manager receive payment for the investment. And also we have, uh, after the unit are created, the owner of the unit are the unit holder. The custodian is the trustee and the property is all the asset of the fund in the form of monies and other investment, the contract take place with depositing of investment by the manager with the trustee. So, which means uh, when deposit the unit, deposit the money, so we are using this type of uh, contract. Well, they are yet the mana, which uh, uh, we can keep the money and we use the money for the investment purpose. Okay, it's not what they are yet a mana. All right, uh, we arrive at this stage where we will discuss the advantages of unit trust. Okay, what is the advantage? What is the benefit in, uh, uh, in, in, in investing in unit trust? The first one, of course, we can diversify our uh, investment. For example, uh, if we are a very high risk taker, we can invest in a fund that give a stock equity fund, for example. However, in the medium cost, we, we want to separate our investment capital. We can invest in a balance fund or income fund, which provide you a safer, uh, which a uh, uh, stable, uh, stable space for you to invest. Okay, by the multiple portfolio that we have in unit trust. So uh, you can diversify your investment. Okay, and then we have fun with variety of objective. Okay, it's quite similar to the diversification. Different type of fund created for different investment objective. So investors should have no problem finding fund that meet their objective in terms of return and also risk. It offer, also offer record keeping service. Okay, so based on the management company maintain and administ administer the record of the shareholder activity for a given year. So this is a great convenience for the investor. You can check back to the fund manager what you have invested previously. And then professional management. So for you that you don't have uh, much time to do analysis on where to invest. So uh, Unit Trust is the best platform for you to invest because it's been professionally managed by the, uh, the one who experienced in the investment platform. Okay, they are knowledgeable about the investment. They have a good track record of performance and high integrity. And then high liquidity. So unit trust can be bought and sold. When we do a redemption, you can back, you can get back your cash. Okay, uh, either it is uh, 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 maybe that is uh, will give you a profit of uh, sometimes will, they will give you a profit. Okay, sometimes uh, when you sell it. Uh, uh, due to the economic condition that is not stable, so maybe that your capital will go uh, lower than your uh, than your capital investment itself. And then affordability: only a small am amount of money is needed to participate in portfolio investment, which uh, enjoy the same benefit as in a direct investment, which require large amount of capital. So I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, you can start investing investing uh, with just a hundred ringgit. Okay, 
Uh, so you can you 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 have to identify uh, which one of the fund manager in Malaysia lah. For example, we have Kenanga Investment, we have Public Mutual, we have CIMB Principal. Okay, so all of that will will give you a different uh, uh, different uh, uh, starting investment uh, investment cost lah. Okay. Okay, what is the disadvantages of unit trust? So for this, uh, this discussion, we it have a load fee. Okay, we have a sale charge added to the fund NAV when unit trust is sold. It is high as ten percent, and then high annual expense, operating expense like accounting, legal, postage, management management fee have to be borne by the investor, and also have a transaction cost. Management company must pay transaction costs to buy and sell security even though they trade in large block. So this is the cost have been borne by all the investor. It is higher compared to the uh, stock market or any 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 related to the stock market. Okay, so because why we appoint someone to manage. Okay, we appoint someone to manage your investment. We appoint someone to buy the stock in the uh, Bursa Malaysia. Okay, because the appointment that we made toward the fund manager, they have to uh, charge us with this uh, fee. Lah, okay, either it's sales charges, operating charges, management charges. So the detail of this, okay, the detail of these charges, charges, okay, you can refer to the prospectus of the fund. Okay, so this is one of the investment. Uh, one of the prospectus that I have, uh, I have uh, 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 give to my 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 student to do this uh, this this uh, uh, chart that they have to uh, they have to look for one prospectus and they have to identify what is their prospectus is all about. So let's say that in Malaysia we have a very very large number. Okay, we have a. I, I, I don't remember okay, uh, berapa fund manager yang ada dekat Malaysia ni. So based on the fund manager that we have, for example, uh, public mutual itself. So public mutual tu ada banyak sangat fund yang ada di dalamnya. So just take one fund, okay, and then you uh, bedah lah fund tersebut. So for example, ini uh, student saya, Atika. So what? Uh, have they what have they choose is a kenanga investor kenanga investment ke kenanga investor so kenanga investor berhad the fund name one of the fund from the kenanga is kenanga one prs growth fund so they have a fund objective to seek seek to provide capital growth so trustee that they use is maybank trustee category of fund is a growth fund Okay, the benchmark they use is composite of all MGS index and FPN hundred. Okay, this a uh, balance between uh, 30 thirty percent of composite of all MGS index and seventy percent of FPN hundred. Okay, so this is the fee and charges that they uh, uh they they uh kena kan kepada investor, which is one point five, one point uh five five percent per annum. Trustee fee zero point zero one five percent per annum and redemption charges is not available. Ah, tak ada lah, tak dikenakan. Okay, all fee charges payable to the manager. So who is the, who is the person they target to invest in this kenanga one PRS? Okay, it is suitable for members who seek capital appreciation, have moderate risk tolerance, uh, withstand short term volatility. For member under the default option who are below age of 40 years. So they target the person who is below 40 years. Okay. Okay. And then we have we have another one. Okay. MIDF Amanah Asset Management Berhad. Uh, ini memang betul-betul uh, uh, carta ni. <laughs> Kita nak tengok kena sengit-sengit kepala lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the fund name is MIDF Amanah Syariah. Category of fund is short term matured period. It is Syariah compliant fund. So who is investor profile? Who are uh, uh, the one who sweep or uh, the the target of this fund is uh, the one who is have a have a low risk tolerance, have a short to medium uh, term investment horizon. 
who is the trustee is Amanah Raya Trustee and Maybank, Maybank Trustee. The objective of the fund is to provide investor with a regular income stream over, over short to medium term comply with Sharia requirement. Okay, uh, in term of charge and fee, we have a subscription fee, redemption charge is, is not available and management fee is 0.2% per annum of NAV of the fund. For example, uh, NAV, you are the NAV, uh, total you punya uh, investment cost is about 100,000. So you just multiply with 0.2% per annum. Okay, so where this fund will be invest? Uh, kalau tadi kita tengok uh, investment portfolio, so the the portfolio will, will be invest in Islamic deposit, Islamic money market, okay, Islamic short term debt instrument, okay, up to uh, mature period not more than three hundred sixty five days, and then we have we have up to ten percent Islamic short term debt instrument, okay. Uh, this is all the asset allocation for MIDF. Amana Asset Management. Uh, he also provides us with the Sharia Advisor for this uh, fund. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is the one who responsible for the Sharia compliance of this fund. So for you guys, okay, I need you to find exactly like this. Okay. For example, you go to the public mutual or you go to the what else we have? <laughs> okay. For example, Kenanga uh, and then the IMB, Maybank, Bank Islam. Okay, they all have they all have a fund manager, and you just need to find one, uh, fund unit trust fund, and I need you to, uh, uh to do this uh this this start of uh we can say this as a, a chart or we can say this is a one, Allah Masya Allah Sayyidina Muhammad. Ataupun kita kata satu infographic eh, so one infographic regarding this fund. So I want you to do this infographic that mention uh, what is the origin. So for this for this uh, slide for this uh, MIDF, they have not mentioned where it come from. For example, Kenanga tadi, uh, you know the fund management manager is Kenanga investor. So you have to mention what is the fund manager, what is the fund main fund name, okay, categories of the fund, who is the investor profile. Who are the one who switch to invest in this uh, type of fund? Okay, the trustee uh, objective of the fund. Who is where is the asset location of this fund? Either it is uh, for outside Malaysia or inside Malaysia, commodity ke, for suku ke. Okay, what is the charges and the fee? Okay, and also what who is the share advisor for the fund? So I need you to do it. Uh, uh, you pair with your friend. Okay, you you do this as a pairing with your friend. So let me know who is your friend, uh, what group, uh, uh, both of you, and then you need to find one fund. Okay, the fund that you choose uh, cannot be same with others. So all will be different. So where to upload this 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 uh this uh task? Okay, you can upload in the activities punya part lah. Okay, uh, so we have one 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 category of activities in uh, in your future, so you can upload there. All right. So I think that's all. Okay. So I hope you clear with the instruction. All right. So in this chapter, you have learned about the investment fund, unit trust fund. You have learned on the practice that involve uh, in unit trust fund, Islamic fund management. And you can classify the investment fund and you can also explain the type of portfolio investment. We also touch on the regulatory uh, part of the uh, unit trust fund and fund management. So I, have, I hope that you get something from this. So uh, we'll meet again, inshallah, for the next uh, topic. Okay, uh, that's all from now. Okay, thank you, for, thank you so much for your attention uh, and... See you again next time. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.